Dino Mai. about you. So, here's a little about me. I'm Isaac Clement, but just call me Isaac. No need for formalities. Besides, in the park, we've got to watch each other's backs. Now, people think we're in the dinosaur game, but the truth is, we're entertainers, and our headliners traveled 65 million years to make the show. So let's make it a good one. This bipedal predator is called the Acrocanthosaurus, and it is a dinosaur that has what I like to refer to as presence. When it's around, you know it. This animal should make for a killer exhibit. I mean, it being a killer and all. <laughs> Claire Deering. I'm extremely passionate about the dinosaurs and about our responsibility to take care of them. This is the Albertosaurus, so named because it was first discovered in the Canadian province of Alberta. This animal is a smart predator that relies on its rows of sharp teeth. They exhibit pack behavior, which is very exciting to witness, as long as you're doing so from a safe distance.
science is everything. It brought the dinosaurs back from beyond the brink, and it is keeping them here now. I hope you understand how vitally important this is. Ah, oh, I haven't introduced myself. Dr. Kajal Dua. You need to be as passionate about our work as I am. I'll accept no less. Every dinosaur that's recreated is important, but some also capture our imaginations. The Allosaurus is one such animal. It is believed that in its original environment, it was squarely at the top of the food chain. I'm interested to discover if that's true, given the opportunity. It's an Amargosaurus, according to the paperwork I have in front of me. Another interesting factoid, its long neck meant it probably liked to feed on the taller branches of trees and such. At least that's what it says. Guess we'll find out, huh? <laughs>
They call this the Ankylosaurus. I call it an armored ball of walking, breathing trouble. Still, some might call it charming, amusing, delightful. <laughs> Each to their own. Dr. Henry Wu here, geneticist. This massive specimen is called the Apatosaurus, an impressive animal that can intimidate even the most determined of predators. The Apatosaurus's evolutionary advantages are its size and its demeanor.
parks have become famous for dinosaurs, it's not quite the way we'd want. Hopefully, working together, we can change that. Sorry, I meant to introduce myself. George Lambert, security specialist. Our challenges are many, so let's not waste any time. There was a lot of controversy about dinosaurs being the ancestors of modern-day birds before this one was introduced into the park. It's an Archaeornithomimus. I think it puts some of those arguments to rest. heard a lot about you so here's a little about me I'm Isaac Clement but just call me Isaac no need for formalities besides in the park we've got to watch each other's backs now people think we're in the dinosaur game but the truth is we're entertainers and our headliners traveled 65 million years to make the show so let's make it a good one Okay, this is amazing, a baryonyx. These animals have very large claws on their first digit. This dinosaur also likes water, so take a moment to consider its needs when planning out a suitable habitat for it. The baryonyx was originally thought to be a scavenger, but now, with live animals to study, we can find out for sure.
your future and our past. I'm Claire Deering. I used to be management until things went awry. Now I'm more of an advocate. John Hammond wanted a world with dinosaurs and I want us to take care of them. I hope you do as well. Okay, what we have here is a Brachiosaurus. It has long limbs relative to the rest of its body. And what makes it really unique is that it's a warm-blooded dinosaur. I mean, how amazing is it that in bringing these dinosaurs back, we're also learning so much about them. Science is everything. It brought the dinosaurs back from beyond the brink, and it is keeping them here now. I hope you understand how vitally important this is. Oh, I haven't introduced myself. Dr. Kajal Dua. You need to be as passionate about our work as I am. I'll accept no less. Known as the Chambered Lizard, the Chimerosaurus impresses with both its size and its blunt snout. It prefers to live in groups, a challenge, but one I'm confident you can handle. Stay with me. This dinosaur is called a Carcharodontosaurus. Talk about a mouthful, right? And seeing that this animal is an alpha predator, its mouth is usually full of the slow, the weak, and the inattentive. <laughs> Hence the reason I'm not getting near it. You, on the other hand,
Owen Grady here. I'll keep it brief, and that's it. Done. Nice, a Carnotaurus. You could recognize this predator immediately by the horns on its head, which give it a real rock and roll appearance. Those powerful legs can get this dinosaur moving as well, so probably best to stay out of its way. This dinosaur is so metal. Claire Deering. I'm extremely passionate about the dinosaurs and about our responsibility to take care of them. Now this dinosaur is something special. Well, they're all something special, but this one stands out because of the horns on top of its head. It's called Ceratosaurus. It kind of looks like a slightly smaller T-Rex, but its bite is probably about the same.
I'm Claire Deering. I know it must be overwhelming to meet all these new people, but you're about to embark on a life-changing adventure. It certainly was for me. Trust me, you'll understand. Talk about the opposite of subtle. And I don't mean Owen. No, this is the Chasmosaurus. It has dynamic coloring and these large openings called fenestrae in a frill that rises above its head. This is a dinosaur that says, look at me. So maybe a little like Owen. I'm Isaac Quimmin. Together, we'll create the most spectacular dinosaur park imaginable. And hopefully not die in the process. <laughs> really, I don't want to die. First discovered in China, the Chungkingosaurus has distinctive twin plates that run along its back. And it can swing its spiked tail, called a thagomizer, like a massive medieval mace. This is a dinosaur best observed at a distance. Deering. I'm extremely passionate about the dinosaurs and about our responsibility to take care of them. This dinosaur is one of the earliest known animals dating back to perhaps 216 million years ago. It's called Coelophysis. Their remains can be found scattered across the globe. But if people want to see a Coelophysis up close, this is the only place to do it.
Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Kajal Dua. I'm something of a perfectionist, and I demand it in others. So I expect that you'll do your best. I just wanted to make that clear. Oh, and welcome. The Compsognathus is a small predator, but don't let its stature fool you. It can be a ruthless hunter. work with the dinosaurs, and now you do too. I'm Owen Grady. From my experience, I've learned the most important thing is to respect these animals, because if you don't, they won't have any trouble making you their next meal. This dinosaur, the Corythosaurus, is a duck-billed animal that looks like it's wearing a helmet. I mean, check that thing out. I wouldn't want to butt heads with it. I'm Dr. Henry Wu. I'm a scientist. Some might call me an artist, a sculptor. 
My sculptures are living, breathing dinosaurs. Ah, the Crichtonsaurus. Named after the author, Michael Crichton. Famous for his stories about infectious viruses, sentient nanobots, and also a novel on ancient animals, which I quite enjoyed. This is a social dinosaur that does well in groups. Parks have become famous for dinosaurs. It's not quite the way we'd want. Hopefully, working together, we can change that. Sorry, I meant to introduce myself. George Lambert, security specialist. Our challenges are many, so let's not waste any time. This is a Cryolophosaurus, one of the more colorful members of the collection. It's a carnivore, so take the necessary precautions and don't let its looks deceive you. Claire Deering. I'm extremely passionate about the dinosaurs and about our responsibility to take care of them. This dinosaur is important for a number of reasons. I mean, they're all important, but this one, the Deinonychus, was the center of debate among paleontologists for many years. Specifically, were the dinosaurs cold-blooded or warm-blooded animals? With them alive and in the park, we have our answer.
Okay, I'm Isaac Clement. Together, we'll create the most spectacular dinosaur park imaginable. And hopefully not die in the process. <laughs> really, I don't want to die. This dinosaur, the Dilophosaurus, has a distinctive neck frill it can expand when it senses danger. It's also been known to spit into the eyes of its prey, blinding it before it goes in for the kill. I'm Dr. Kajal Dua, and while you're keeping an eye on the dinosaurs, I'll be keeping an eye on you. Another massive animal. The Diplodocus was once considered the longest animal that ever lived. And now, thanks to our extensive research, it's back. My task is to make sure we learn everything we can about this dinosaur. Your task is making sure these magnificent creatures can survive in the modern world. The Draco Rex is something strange. Its name means the Dragon King of a fictional school for wizards. I think I could have come up with that myself. The name, not the dinosaur. For that, we need the scientists.
Owen Grady here. I'll keep it brief, and that's it. Done. This animal, though an herbivore, can intimidate most predators with its size. It's a biggie named Dreadnoughtus. I'd give this dinosaur a wide berth. We know this animal's primary habitat was the ancient primordial forest that once covered this planet. It's called Dryosaurus. Before our research, there was no information on adult specimens of this dinosaur. We only had the fossilized record of juveniles. But now, that's all changed. My name is George Lambert. Now, you'd think that dealing with prehistoric animals would be a problem. And you'd be right, as you probably discovered. But it's the unpredictability that really keeps us on our toes. Sure, the scientists can bring dinosaurs back, but fences keep them in. And without them, the fences, I mean, none of this is possible. 
Interesting. An Edmontosaurus. This is an herbivore that can move on all four feet or go upright and walk on its hindquarters. We should be able to control and monitor this species more easily than some of the others. Use that to your advantage as you plan out the park. I've heard a lot about you, so here's a little about me. I'm Isaac Clement, but just call me Isaac, no need for formalities. Besides, in the park, we've got to watch each other's backs. Now, people think we're in the dinosaur game, but the truth is, we're entertainers, and our headliners traveled 65 million years to make the show. So let's make it a good one. Ah, this is a Euoplocephalus, an herbivore and relatively harmless dinosaur, as long as you stay out of the way of the heavy club on his tail. If it swings that your way, you could be relatively finished. Dr. Kajal Dua. And while you're keeping an eye on the dinosaurs, I'll be keeping an eye on you. Some of these animals present a real test of our abilities. Take, for instance, this latest dinosaur, the Gallimimus. It's an opportunistic omnivore that does best in groups. That alone isn't the problem. But the speed. Gallimimus is incredibly fast which presents special challenges for the ranger teams tasked with monitoring them.
I work with the dinosaurs, and now you do too. I'm Owen Grady. From my experience, I've learned the most important thing is to respect these animals, because if you don't, they won't have any trouble making you their next meal. People often confuse this animal, the Giganotosaurus, with the T-Rex. They look similar, act similar, and both have that eat everything within their field of vision thing working for them. This dinosaur is also fast. Bottom line, if you find yourself running from this biggie, you've already made a fatal mistake. My name is George Lambert. Now, you'd think that dealing with prehistoric animals would be a problem. And you'd be right, as you've probably discovered. But it's the unpredictability that really keeps us on our toes. Sure, the scientists can bring dinosaurs back, but fences keep them in. And without them, the fences, I mean, none of this is possible. The gigant Spinosaurus you have here doesn't quite live up to its name. Don't get me wrong, it's big, but manageable. Just watch out for those shoulder blades. They'd ruin anyone's day.
My name is Isaac Clement, and it's great to finally meet you. I hope you're ready, because the dinosaurs can't wait to meet you too. Now, what we have here is a Herrerasaurus. It's a carnivore and a spectacular addition to our dinosaurs. It just requires a little TLC. is everything. It brought the dinosaurs back from beyond the brink, and it is keeping them here now. I hope you understand how vitally important this is. Ah, oh, I haven't introduced myself. Dr. Kajal Dua. You need to be as passionate about our work as I am. I'll accept no less. This flat-headed dinosaur, the Homolocephaly, can appear unassuming and perhaps even cute to some. But let's also stay on top of the science. We can learn a lot from a little. My Chinese isn't very good. Okay, I don't speak it at all, but let me give this one a try. Huayangasaurus. Nailed it, I think. Anywho, this is a type of stegosaur that was first discovered in the Sichuan province of China. It's a popular species with our guests, and with crossword puzzle creators. <laughs>
My name is George Lambert. Now, you'd think that dealing with prehistoric animals would be a problem. And you'd be right, as you've probably discovered. But it's the unpredictability that really keeps us on our toes. Sure, the scientists can bring dinosaurs back, but fences keep them in. And without them, the fences, I mean, none of this is possible. This dinosaur is large, bulky, and has a stubborn disposition. It's called the Iguanodon. It's an herbivore with attitude. I'd suggest giving it a wide berth. Dr. Henry Wu here, geneticist. What can I say? The Indominus Rex remains my most inspired creation. Nature can create a dinosaur, but only I can bring an Indominus Rex to life. To do so required a tremendous amount of research, gene mixing, splicing and manipulation, and of course, determination. The end result is a hybrid dinosaur that is both beautiful and deadly. An alpha predator among alpha predators. So treat it with the care and respect it deserves. I'm Dr. Henry Wu. I'm a scientist. Some might call me an artist, a sculptor. My sculptures are living, breathing dinosaurs. The Indoraptor. This is a dinosaur created with a purpose. It can even see in the dark and uses echolocation to find its prey. Now, 
nature might eventually have created the Indoraptor, but I got there first. Is it dangerous? Yes. But then so is science. My name is Isaac Clement, and it's great to finally meet you. I hope you're ready, because the dinosaurs can't wait to meet you, too. The Kentrosaurus is another of those spiky-backed dinosaurs. A dinosaur that relied on intimidation to keep the predators at bay. And failing that, a difficult meal to catch and chew. Think of it as a prehistoric porcupine.
Brady here. I'll keep it brief, and that's it. Done. This animal, the Myasaura, is known as the good mother reptile because its fossils were first discovered in a nesting colony. And really, who doesn't love a good mother? While the parks have become famous for dinosaurs, it's not quite the way we'd want. Hopefully, working together, we can change that. Sorry, I meant to introduce myself. George Lambert, security specialist. Our challenges are many, so let's not waste any time. It's dinosaurs like this, the Majungasaurus, that can really be a handful. It's short, stocky, and lives for the hunt. This is also one of the only dinosaurs we know of that may have engaged in cannibalistic behavior. Nothing like having your friends over for dinner. a lot about you so here's a little about me i'm isaac clement but just call me isaac no need for formalities besides in the park we've got to watch each other's backs now people think we're in the dinosaur game but the truth is we're entertainers and our headliners traveled 65 million years to make the show so let's make it a good one okay 
This dinosaur is something special. Seriously, look at the size of this thing. It's called the Mementosaurus. This thing is one of the largest animals to ever walk the earth. And now, thanks to the wonders of genetic engineering, it's doing just that again. Dr. Kajal Dua. And while you're keeping an eye on the dinosaurs, I'll be keeping an eye on you. Anytime you hear the word mega, you know you're dealing with something significant. And the Megalosaurus is no different. This meat-eating theropod dominates any environment it finds itself in. While that's an admirable survival trait, it's also one that we cannot accept here at the park. I want to make that clear. here. I'll keep it brief. And that's it. Done. Let me introduce you to the Metria Canthosaurus. Say that fast three times. This is another alpha predator that, while not as big as some of its cousins, tends to stand more upright. So I guess it has good posture while it's tearing you to shreds.
agile doer. And while you're keeping an eye on the dinosaurs, I'll be keeping an eye on you. Minmai is a relatively small, armoured herbivore from Cretaceous Australia. What sets this species apart from other members of its family are the horizontally orientated plates that run along the sides of its backbone. Hence the binomial name, Minmai paravertebra.
I'm Dr. Henry Wu. I'm a scientist. Some might call me an artist, a sculptor. My sculptures are living, breathing dinosaurs. If it is possible for a dinosaur to be both elegant and awkward at the same time, then the Mudaborosaurus takes the prize. This is a large herbivore that should make for an excellent addition to our collection. gets past me, especially mistakes. Make sure you're paying attention to the details or you'll be hearing from me. Who am I? Dr. Henry Wu. Do you see any resemblance between the Nasutoceratops and modern day cattle? Look closely at the horns and their relation to the eyes. It's clear to me that as we bring these animals back to life, the connections between the past and the present sharpen, and along with it, our understanding. This is what my science is all about. Nothing gets past me, especially mistakes. Make sure you're paying attention to the details or you'll be hearing from me. Who am I? Dr. Henry Wu. This sauropod, the Niger Saurus, was originally discovered in fossilized form in the Republic of Niger, hence the name. Now, it lives thanks to our efforts and our science. Notice the long tail the flat skull. However, this dinosaur is smaller than some of its cousins. 
Now that we have them to study, perhaps we can learn why. Claire Deering. I'm extremely passionate about the dinosaurs and about our responsibility to take care of them. Okay, what we have here is a Notosaurus. This dinosaur tends to be shy and likes to keep to itself. And it has a thick skin. Sort of the opposite of Owen. I'm Dr. Kajal Dua, and while you're keeping an eye on the dinosaurs, I'll be keeping an eye on you. This duck-billed dinosaur is an Alara Titan. It was one of the last non-avian dinosaurs to go extinct, until we resurrected it, that is. Now it lives to be studied and put on display. The Alara Titan is a herbivore. As it grinds away its teeth while eating, it has hundreds more that continually take their place. There's a lesson in there somewhere.
this one's more my speed. The Uranosaurus is named after the Arabic word for courage, which is kind of my thing. This dinosaur is easy to care for and really only wants a comfortable place to eat and rest. And to be left alone. <laughs> Sound like anyone you know? specialist in dinosaur behavior. I've formed a unique bond with the raptors. Now, don't be jealous. This is the Pachycephalosaurus, or thick-headed lizard in Greek, which is where it gets its name. 
Claire has accused me of being this dinosaur more than a few times. It's also an herbivore, so obviously she couldn't be more wrong. About me, I mean. Parks have become famous for dinosaurs. It's not quite the way we'd want. Hopefully, working together, we can change that. Sorry, I meant to introduce myself. George Lambert, security specialist. Our challenges are many, so let's not waste any time. They say fences make good neighbors. I say without them, dinosaurs like this one, the Pachyrhinosaurus, shouldn't be in the park. This animal is built like a tank and it has the personality to match. Okay, I'm Isaac Clement. Together, we'll create the most spectacular dinosaur park imaginable, and hopefully not die in the process. <laughs> really, I don't want to die. Okay, so this next dinosaur, the Parasaurolophus, has a flair for the dramatic, especially where its head is concerned. It has a distinctive cranial crest, which is used for added resonance in its vocalizations and to regulate its body temperature.
show the Pentaceratops here. It has five horns. One on the nose, two on the brows, and two extending out from its jugular bones. It seems excessive, but maybe it's necessary. While the parks have become famous for dinosaurs, it's not quite the way we'd want. Hopefully, working together, we can change that. Sorry, I meant to introduce myself. George Lambert, security specialist. Our challenges are many, so let's not waste any time. This is the Polacanthus, and it's covered in armor plates and spikes. Mess with this animal at your own risk. Isaac Clement. Together, we'll create the most spectacular dinosaur park imaginable, and hopefully not die in the process. <laughs> really, I don't want to die. You successfully introduced a new dinosaur, 
a Proceratosaurus. This animal is instantly recognizable by the colorful crest on its snout. While smaller in stature than some of the other predators, it is not a dinosaur to be taken lightly, let me tell you. The Changesaurus. Neat. Really great that we're bringing back all these fast, hungry predators. Even better that I get to stay in the office with locks on the doors. <laughs> While the parks have become famous for dinosaurs, it's not quite the way we'd want. Hopefully, working together, we can change that. Sorry, I meant to introduce myself. George Lambert, security specialist. Our challenges are many, so let's not waste any time. Interested in a dinosaur with an extremely long tail? Then this dinosaur is for you. It's called the Saurapelta. Covered in bony armor, it has long spines projecting from its neck. All that being said, it is a relatively calm animal when placed in the right environment.
about you. So here's a little about me. I'm Isaac Clement, but just call me Isaac. No need for formalities. Besides, in the park, we've got to watch each other's backs. Now, people think we're in the dinosaur game, but the truth is we're entertainers and our headliners traveled 65 million years to make the show. So let's make it a good one. The Sinoceratops, an herbivore that shares many traits with its more famous cousin, the Triceratops. This is a docile animal that you could make into a solid favorite with a little effort. Of course, we're all expecting more than a little effort, but I'm sure you get what I mean. Even I have to admit that this next dinosaur is impressive. The Spinosaurus is perhaps the largest of carnivores. Of course, I'll never get close enough to one to see for myself, but <laughs> that's why I have you. I'm George Lambert, in charge of security, and I just want to remind you that the safety of our guests and our dinosaurs, well, 
That's job one. Before I got into the paleo curation game, even I knew of the Stegosaurus. Those plates running along its length from head to tail make it one of the most iconic dinosaurs. Our guests are gonna want to see it, so make sure you do right by this animal. I'm Isaac Clement. Together, we'll create the most spectacular dinosaur park imaginable. And hopefully not die in the process. <laughs> really, I don't want to die. Look at an ostrich or emu, then look at this latest dinosaur, the Struthiomimus. And tell me you don't see a connection. This is one of the more bird-black dinosaurs that we've brought back from extinction. It literally has a beak instead of teeth. It's an herbivore that prefers to move in herds. Overall, a fantastic addition to the park. I'm Isaac Clement. Together, we'll create the most spectacular dinosaur park imaginable. And hopefully not die in the process. <laughs> really, I don't want to die. This is the Stiggy Moloch. And it is one hard-headed dinosaur. It has an armored dome crowned by horns. Despite this, it's a social and relatively docile animal. Unless threatened. Then steer well clear of it. This dinosaur can do a number on its enclosures and bash its way through any number of obstacles. Take that into consideration when you're planning its environment. Thank you. 
Owen Grady here. I'll keep it brief, and that's it. Done. This dinosaur, the Styracosaurus, has huge horns and a large spike similar to a rhinoceros. It also has the personality to match. It's an herbivore and uses those horns and a beak to break into even the toughest of plants. My name is George Lambert. Now, you'd think that dealing with prehistoric animals would be a problem. And you'd be right, as you've probably discovered. But it's the unpredictability that really keeps us on our toes. Sure, the scientists can bring dinosaurs back, but fences keep them in. And without them, the fences, I mean, none of this is possible. This dinosaur has a skull similar to a crocodile's and a disposition that isn't that far off either. The Suchomimus originally fed on fish and small prey. Let's make sure it doesn't expand its diet into two-legged animals wearing collector t-shirts. the Taurosaurus, a dinosaur that has the largest skull of any known land animal. And people say I have a big head. <laughs> Thank you. 
the parks have become famous for dinosaurs, it's not quite the way we'd want. Hopefully, working together, we can change that. Sorry, I meant to introduce myself. George Lambert, security specialist. Our challenges are many, so let's not waste any time. What can be said about the Triceratops? This is one of those dinosaurs that really defines our business. People want to see them, and we want to share them with the world. Don't let that fearsome appearance fool you. Those horns are mostly for defense and impressing other Triceratops. This animal is an herbivore. It can be a star attraction or a security nightmare if it turns those horns on our fencing. My name is Isaac Quemin, and it's great to finally meet you. I hope you're ready, because the dinosaurs can't wait to meet you, too. Personally, I don't think the Troodon gets as much respect as it should. It's one of those dinosaurs that seems like an evolutionary bridge, stuck in time and transition. The platypus of its day. And now, ours. It's also incredibly interesting to study and display, so make the most of this animal.
here's a funny little dinosaur. A correction, a pretty decent sized one, if the truth be told. It's called a Tsintosaurus. The T is silent. Like the P in swimming. <laughs> yeah, and it has a mohawk. At least, that's what I'd call it. I'm Claire Deering. I know it must be overwhelming to meet all these new people, but you're about to embark on a life-changing adventure. It certainly was for me. Trust me, you'll understand. There isn't a more iconic dinosaur than the T-Rex. Even people who don't know the difference between herbivore and carnivore know all about the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And when you see her up close, feel her gaze, you understand why the T-Rex was the ruler of the Cretaceous period.
work with the dinosaurs, and now you do too. I'm Owen Grady. From my experience, I've learned the most important thing is to respect these animals, because if you don't, they won't have any trouble making you their next meal. Everyone knows I have a soft spot for this dinosaur, the Velociraptor, and they get a bad rap as far as I'm concerned. But if you imprint early enough, you can make real connections with them. Other than Claire, raptors are the most intelligent partners I've ever had. And like her, they could kill me in the blink of an eye. <laughs> that's, a, that's a joke. I'm George Lambert, in charge of security, and I just want to remind you that the safety of our guests and our dinosaurs, well, that's job one. Don't spend too much time looking at those plates. When it comes to the Werhosaurus, it pays to keep an eye on this animal's thagomizer. You don't want to be on the receiving end of a swing of that tail. While the parks have become famous for dinosaurs, it's not quite the way we'd want. Hopefully, working together, we can change that. Sorry, I meant to introduce myself. George Lambert, security specialist. Our challenges are many, so let's not waste any time. Honestly, the flying animals concern me the most from a security standpoint. We can round up escape land animals, but when they take to the sky, all bets are off. This is the Sayarodactylus, and we need to make sure it stays confined to the aviary. The only known species of this animal before today was named after the Latin name for frightful. That should tell you something.
I'm Claire Deering. I know it must be overwhelming to meet all these new people, but you're about to embark on a life-changing adventure. It certainly was for me. Trust me, you'll understand. Now, you'd think a mouthful of teeth would be scary enough, but this animal, the Dimorphodon, actually has two distinct types of teeth in its jaws. And it flies. Well, more accurately, glides. Hey, my name is Isaac Clement, and it's great to finally meet you. I hope you're ready, because the dinosaurs can't wait to meet you, too. I'm not sure about you, but I've not seen anything like this before. Check it out, the Sungariptorus. This pterosaur would use its curved jaws like a crowbar, levering shellfish out of the mud before cracking them open with their blunt teeth. That's pretty resourceful, huh? If you don't think nature can be bonkers at times, then you've never laid eyes on this newest animal, the Geosternbergia. However, it is apparently graceful in the air. Not that I would know, but isn't that your job?
Okay, this latest animal is also a flyer, the Maradactylus. Its name is based on an ancient legend of a chief's daughter. Her name was Mara, turned by sorcery into a river monster with long teeth that devoured fishermen. <laughs> Change a few of the details and this could be my ex. Okay, I'm Isaac Clement. Together, we'll create the most spectacular dinosaur park imaginable. And hopefully not die in the process. <laughs> really, I don't want to die. What's a show without fireworks? That's what this next animal gives us. Aerial color and excitement. And check out that sail behind its head. Spectacular. Oh, I, I meant to say that this is a Tapajara, one of our more interesting flying species. If you couldn't have guessed by now, I'm a fan. I think you should be too.
The Tropiognathus is one of the larger pterosaurs and is known for its keel-tipped snout. In the aviary, should make for one heck of a draw. future and our past. I'm Claire Deering. I used to be management until things went awry. Now I'm more of an advocate. John Hammond wanted a world with dinosaurs and I want us to take care of them. I hope you do as well. This dinosaur, the Attenboroughsaurus, is named after the famed naturalist and documentarian David Attenborough. I guess you could say dinosaurs run in his family. Claire Deering. I'm extremely passionate about the dinosaurs and about our responsibility to take care of them. We know that all life began in the sea, the primordial soup. Some creatures made their way to shore and started the chain reaction of land animals. Others stayed in the oceans, like the Elasmosaurus, and set the pattern for the marine life that would follow. This beautiful animal has a long neck and a flat tail. With the right setting, it should really attract the crowds.
work with the dinosaurs, and now you do too. I'm Owen Grady. From my experience, I've learned the most important thing is to respect these animals, because if you don't, they won't have any trouble making you their next meal. While dinosaurs once ruled the Earth, other animals ruled the seas. Take the Ichthyosaurus, a perfect example of what I'm talking about. They have a large dorsal fin much like a dolphin, or actually more like a shark. I've heard a lot about you, so here's a little about me. I'm Isaac Clement, but just call me Isaac, no need for formalities. Besides, in the park, we've got to watch each other's backs. Now, people think we're in the dinosaur game, but the truth is, we're entertainers, and our headliners traveled 65 million years to make the show. So let's make it a good one. Okay. Here we have the Kronosaurus, a predator that once ruled the seas of Colombia and Australia. Now get this, the marine reptile was named after the titan Kronos, a legendary ruler of Greek mythology's golden age. Pretty cool, right? I'm Dr. Kajal Dua. I'm something of a perfectionist, and I demand it in others. So I expect that you'll do your best. I just wanted to make that clear. Oh, and welcome. It is the diversity of life we are discovering that I find to be most interesting. Take this animal, the Liopleurodon, for instance. This is a carnivorous marine reptile that is optimized for efficiency. 
both for swimming effortlessly through the water and for relentlessly hunting its prey. And what nature created, we can recreate. And maybe, if I can be so bold, improve upon. Or at least find ways to exploit. My name is Isaac Clement, and it's great to finally meet you. I hope you're ready, because the dinosaurs can't wait to meet you too. So when people come to the park, they want to learn something, sure. But they also want to be entertained. And this marine reptile, the Mosasaurus, is just that, a showstopper. If the T-Rex is the ruler of the dinosaurs on land, then the Mosasaurus holds that title below the waves. Make sure this animal is a premium attraction. Jealous. Another creature from the ancient oceans. This time a plesiosaurus. It has a flat body, an elongated tail, and four powerful flippers that help it glide through the water. Like modern day sea mammals, it has to come up for air. It basically spends its time surfing and eating, which is <laughs> not a bad way to live.
Remember when you were a kid and they told you not to eat, then go in the water? Well, with this predator, the Tylosaurus, if you go in the water, you're gonna get eaten. I mean, seriously, this is every sailor's nightmare come to life.